Killer Timing is the sixth and currently the penultimate Mystery 101 film. I will be devastated when I watch the next one because I genuinely don't want this series to end. If anybody knows if they are ever making any more, please feel free to let me know. I hope they are. This one was released last year in 2023. It's directed by Fred Gerber or Gerber and stars, of course, Jill Wagner as Amy and Christopher Palaha as Travis. And for the most part, there won't be any spoilers. But I will, towards the end, give a spoiler warning, so I want to discuss a few things. One thing that I really, really, really want to praise it for, and one thing that I actually was a little bit disappointed by. But they are spoilers, so I will get there at the end. And this one, actually, unusually for Mystery 101, starts off about 20 minutes into the film. By which I mean, we have something that happens... And then immediately after this dramatic intro, it's something that happens to Travis. After that dramatic intro, we then go back in time a little bit. And then over the course of, I want to say 20 minutes, it might not be as long as that. But we backtrack a bit and then we get to that point again. And honestly, I don't think they needed to do that. I don't think they needed to have this dramatic, explosive beginning and then backtrack because... The films are really compelling anyway, apart from uh, one of them, which was a bit of a weak link. But I don't think they needed to start further on in the film and then backtrack. But nevertheless, that's what's happened. And something has happened to Travis. And it seems like it could be connected to a criminal he's trying to put behind bars. And Amy and Travis... And somebody from Travis's past, who I won't say too much about, but I will say I liked the character. I didn't think I was going to, but I did. I liked the character from Travis's past. And together they try and solve this crime and work out what's happening. And there are several unexpected things. And I, again, at the moment, I won't discuss them in any detail. But what I will say is there's a lot. There are a lot of things going on in this film. And... It never felt difficult to keep up with what was happening, even though we were constantly being thrown different things. And sometimes it was difficult to see how things were connected. Sometimes I wanted to go down a certain direction because I was so certain that this person was a suspect and then it was pulling me in a different direction. And I just never, while I was finding it easy to keep up with everything, I never knew where it was going. And I love that. I really like that. It's a very well-written, very, very well-structured narrative, aside from the fact that it started further into the film. I didn't love that part of it. But other than that, I think the structure of the narrative is really great. At no point did I work out what was going on with none of it. With none of the aspects of this film did I work it out. And I love that. As I've mentioned before, I love the element of surprise. And for the most part, that worked well. But there was something that I just, I don't buy it. Something was revealed and I'm just, I'm not buying it as a concept. So I'll talk more about that in a moment. But I have so much praise for the rest of the film that that aspect of it, I can just brush off. I enjoyed the rest of it. That bit I don't like. It is what it is. The rest of it's absolutely fantastic. We have some great moments between Amy and Travis. Their relationship has been very slow to develop, but that does make it seem a little bit more believable. So I, I quite enjoyed that aspect as well. And really, other than the one thing I'm going to mention in a moment, I don't have any complaints about this film. In fact, I've got a lot of praise for it. The pacing is amazing. It is not predictable, which for the most part worked really well. The narrative structure, aside from the bit I've mentioned, is brilliant because they managed to juggle quite a lot of different things. And I feel like every aspect got the exact amount of time it needed. And we have various characters, various suspects. There is a lot to juggle, but it does it expertly. And I really, really enjoyed Killer Timing. So I will now, with a spoiler warning, discuss two things. One thing, as I said, I really want to praise with how well it's done. The other thing is something that I didn't really enjoy. So these are huge spoilers now. One's bigger than the other, but they're both things that happen towards the end of the film. And one of them is, quite simply, the conclusion that not everything in this is connected. And I kind of liked that. The explosion was not targeting anybody in particular and the body in the wall was not connected to any of the other cases they were investigating which of course it never was going to be because that was decades ago 
and the Wolfman wasn't even involved in anything. I feel like we needed a little bit more of a conclusion for that part of the narrative. I mean, we found out what happened to him, but I, I wanted to know a tiny bit more about what happened in between him running and then that happening. But that's more of a personal preference thing. They didn't leave any threads dangling. I just would have liked a little bit more information. But I love the fact that not everything was 100% connected, but it all still felt relevant to the narrative. And I loved that. Unfortunately, I didn't love who done it. I think the story with the explosion executed perfectly. The body in the wall makes perfect sense. All of those absolutely brilliant. But who done it with regards to who was shooting and targeting, well, we thought Travis, but actually he was targeting Amy. I just don't believe it. Yes, I kind of believe hacking into the software and amending the email. Fine, I can get that. But then committing murder just to avoid being lonely. I just, I don't buy it. I didn't. I didn't think it was believable. And I think this might be the first time with a Mystery 101 where I've completely just, well, apart from the one that I just absolutely hated, there's one Mystery 101 that I hated. But other than that, I genuinely always believed the motives of the murderer. Everything made perfect sense. And this one, I just, I don't buy it. I don't get it. I don't think it would work out like that. I could be wrong. Maybe they wrote it based on a true story that I'm not aware of and I could be eating my words. And if that's the case, fair enough. But just watching it from an entertainment perspective, when that reveal happened, my immediate thought was that just is ridiculous. That's too extreme to be believed. Granted, there are many crimes out there that are seemingly too strange to be believed. But within the context of the film, I'm still not buying it. But as I said, the rest of the film was so wonderful that I'm just going to overlook it. Because honestly, I actually found the the explosion part of the story to be significantly more interesting anyway. No offense to Travis. Obviously, it's quite dramatic when we think somebody's trying to kill him. But I found that the explosion and the body in the wall to be much more interesting. But nevertheless, it's it's a good film. It's a brilliant film. Not a great whodunit reveal. If nothing else, it was surprising. I did, certainly didn't expect it. But beyond that, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Sad that it's currently the penultimate film, but I'm really looking forward to the last one.